is drowning! of Backstage Access. I'm your host, Kayla Brandon, and I'm here with the band Whose Manatee is Drowning. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Great. So you guys just performed a set, and you guys looked pretty excited and hyped out there on stage. How do you feel now? Ethan, why don't you explain? I, I feel just as hyped, actually. If not I'm actually more, more excited now than I was. <laughs> more than ever. Yeah. Okay, well, so your name of your band pretty unique and interesting. Do, is there a story behind that? Um, the long story is it essentially goes back to our roots of what we stand for and that it's kind of a play on words whose humanity is drowning said the right way sounds like humanity is drowning and our mission for the band of what we're really trying to do is reach out to a world that we really see is drowning and to be able to be a light and to be able to reach out to those dark places. That's awesome. Do you guys feel similar? Yeah, I feel like when you perform, I mean, you only get to do it so much in your life. I mean, you're only young for so long, and you only get to play music for so long. You might as well make the most of it while you can. I well, mean, Ethan's old, so. <laughs> Ethan's, yeah. Ethan's. He looks Ethan's young and cute. Gone. <laughs> he has a boyish face, so it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's there. I got a beard, kind beautiful. of. Well, yeah, as we're talking about ages and everything, why don't we go down the line and just say, you know, your name Starting and where you're from. End. We can start on the end over there with Jeff. Um, I'm Jeff. I am 17. I lived in India, and I was born and raised in Georgia, and I live in Lake Orion, Michigan right now. My name is Chris. I am 16 years old, and I was born in Sterling Heights, and I've lived there all my life. So, My name's Sean. Uh, I'm 18. Uh, I've lived in Dryden my whole life. I grew up there on a farm, so uh, <laughs> it's a little different. My name's David. I'm 17, and I lived in Rochester, and now I moved to Ortonville, so now I'm a hick. 
<laughs> well, we live on a farm with animals. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. I am Ethan. I'm 23, and I spent a year in France and then moved to Africa and lived in Africa for three years growing up. And now I live in Sterling Heights. Wow, so you guys all have traveled a little bit. Some of you have stayed here your whole life. How has that shaped you as an artist? I mean, obviously you guys have different backgrounds, but you all come together and form this awesome band. So how do you think that has helped form you guys? I just, well, on, a, on a side note, I just realized how boring my story is compared <laughs> to everyone else's. <laughs> but uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Well, you guys all come from different backgrounds, and you know you've lived in different places. You've mm -hmm. you know lived in the same place your whole life, but other band members have lived around the world. Yeah. Even. So how do you think that has shaped you as an artist, and you'd come together forming this band? Uh, perspective, really, I guess. You know, it's like um, these guys on the end, like they've lived in different countries and stuff like, that, and that that's something that most kids don't experience. You know, for their entire lives. You know, growing up and. I think that adds a lot to our music and like just understanding people and trying to reach out to them and stuff like that. Absolutely. For me, I'd say um, growing up and I grew up in this small town in Ivory Coast in West Africa called Doropo and we were one of like maybe five white people for hundreds of miles. Like everyone around us was just in small huts and for me, it, it just shapes my entire outlook because I understand that what we see here isn't how the rest of the world lives. And there's a whole world out there that is so desperate for so many things. And it, it just helps us understand that taking what we have for granted just isn't an option. Would you say that you guys, um, I know you guys have like that music video on YouTube, Scribe, it has over 5,000 views. That obviously is a huge platform to reach all the people that you're talking about. How do how has technology, you know, changed the way that you get your message out? Um, I mean, compared to like 30 years ago or 40 years ago, like uh, I think before it was all just about touring and playing shows, and like we, I mean, we work our butts off and we play like, you know, at least two to three shows a month if we can, but like. Uh, there's no way we would have been able to reach out to 5,000 people as a local band without YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty big part of, I guess, uh, promoting and reaching out to people. Cool. <laughs> um, I agree. And obviously, like you said, like Facebook and Twitter, can people find you on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and everything like that? Yes. Um, yes. Our Twitter is, hasn't been working lately, but we're trying to work on that. It's a <laughs> Facebook, long story. Facebook is our main platform of people, I guess. <laughs> it's where it's at. Facebook is cool. And kind of shifting gears back to um, the religious part of what you guys do, I saw you guys prayed before your set. Is that something you guys do every single time? Yeah, every show. Yeah. Why is that important? Um, well... If we don't pray, like I just at least for myself, I feel like so it's, it needs to be done because like it gives me like the energy I need, and like it just like gets me happy and motivated and like not that I don't have that already, but like it just it comforts me and like I really need that to like make it through and I need that throughout my life to make it through each and every day. It's just me though. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really just uh, part of it's just security, like it ma it makes us feel like more like. Um, you know, God is there with us, and like we're we're doing something for Him. You know, and like we're trying to uh, connect with these people, and like it, it kind of just helps us like relax and you know do our thing. I'd say like perspective too, like because sometimes you'll be like at a venue and stuff, and everything will be crazy, and like, oh, who has who's running the DI box? Who's running lights? Like all that stuff, and then like to come together like right before and be like, oh, this is like really why we're doing this is like. It really like helps me personally like calm down and realize okay I'm about to play like so it's it's cool for that reason too for me. I'd say for me it's also an incredibly humbling experience is that every time before we perform no matter how many people are in the crowd no matter how many people are excited or want to see us like we can take that time and really tell God you're the one who matters in this is we want 
all of the glory and the worship to be for you. We won't, we don't want it necessarily just for the fans. We don't mm -hmm. want it for us. We want to make sure that our minds are focused on what it's truly about for us musically, and that's glorifying and worshiping God. So you guys are a Christian band. Yes. 
What else inspires you, obviously, besides your faith? Uh, I think just people, really. People that we've met throughout our entire lives and experiences that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, Fans. Oh, yeah. People who like the music. That's pretty much my, my thing. I'd say personal experiences, too. That was already kind of said, but it's the basis for a lot of our songs is our own things that we've been through that have brought us to where we are now. We try and inject as much of that into our songs as possible. And I feel like when you guys perform, you seem pretty passionate. And do you, how do you feel when you perform? Do you feel like God is present? Because I know he's obviously a huge part of what you guys do. Yeah, um, I feel like, yeah, like the Holy Spirit is like pretty much, I mean, I just, I go crazy, I guess. I love it, like every bit of it. Like there's not a feeling that you can get anywhere else but up there. And it's like my worship time for him and give back to him what he's given back to, given to me. Placing one foot before the other, unsure if his feet will fall on solid ground or sink beneath the surface. The blind wanderer presses forward through the forest. you guys all have seem to have a pretty solid faith did you guys all go to church in the area I mean obviously you guys moved around a lot but how did you guys meet I'm kind of curious you all are different ages and everything like that did you meet yeah, at we're, church? Pr we're a pretty odd group start, yeah <laughs> I don't even know where to start because it's so crazy well we s I mean we started the three of us yeah 
I wasn't even. Here? I wasn't even no, in Sean the band. The, We're the new guys right yeah, here. The, okay. the original band had um, Jeff, David, and myself, and we all uh, met at a church called Kensington. And, I go there. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so we actually, the band got formed on a something called Detroit Reverse, which is a big mission trip. I went down there as a leader. And then uh, David and Jeff were there as students, and they had this talent show at the end of the week. And we were like, hey, why not write a song and perform <laughs> it? So we had no access to instruments at all. So everything was just David making yeah, guitar like, noises. Yeah, I was like humming, like, we we're like, okay, we're going to do this for real. So then we like sat down on the table in the basement, and I was just like, like humming stuff. And then Ethan would like write lyrics, and Jeff didn't know how to play bass. <laughs> so like. Oh. Yeah, and like I was, he's like, Dave, can you like teach me? And and like I, at that point, I was like, there's no way this is even gonna work. So I just kind of like when we went up on stage and before like everything, I just I don't I told you like I tur- I didn't even your his bass wasn't on. I just turned him off because <laughs> yeah, Jeff Jeff thought he was playing, but he wasn't. So sorry. <laughs> this is the first time you're hearing about that. I apologize. But. So we had that and then like afterwards because that was in front of a ton of people and we were terrible too it was was so bad it was so bad and so we just kind of thought we're like hey (laughs) let's actually try this actually working hard for it and actually see where we can take it and then we met sean he was in another band stay till daybreak and then we kind of stole him from that band and then uh we recently had a drummer switch and we had chris who was in a red letter day which is unfortunately deceased, and so we scooped him up as yeah. well. We're like a band leech. We just take, yeah. like, that's what people have well, called us before. So this is what? a warning to all the local bands. Yes. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I was I was in this uh, punk band, and, like, like pop punk, and, like, and I, like, knew uh, David. The only reason I ever met David or any of these guys is because I used to go um, to school where I grew up, which was Dryden, and then I ended up switching schools to go to Oxford High School. And uh, I didn't meet David or anyone for like the first year I was there, and then um, we we took a men's choir together, and I didn't talk to him like half the year, and then um, like I just started talking to him at a concert, and you know we became friends, and then uh, like something happened with uh, your guys like the old our old guitarist, and um, they needed me to fill in for a few shows, and it was like, dude, like I I just need your help, like. Dude, and he's like, I'm like, dude, just spit it out. Just tell me what it is. And like, I had like visions of you playing guitar with us, and yeah. I realized that's what I wanted. So yeah. I was like, hey, this is gonna happen. So maybe he, maybe he was being a little because he's so sneaky attractive. about it. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I I said, yeah, I can fill in for you guys. And I was actually in two bands at that point, which is interesting. And um, my old band played a show with this band and I played two sets and stuff like that and it was just crazy and my other band ended up um you know going away and uh and I've I've been in this band for like what a, a year I think yeah. something like that almost two years yeah, yeah. no it has, it's been like seven months like yeah seven or eight months oh wow yeah, yeah it hasn't even been oh <laughs> Price. But the original band, you guys just had your like original band year anniversary, right? Mm-hmm. January twelfth. Yep. What that did was you guys fun. do? Yeah. What did you guys do to celebrate? Um, Cake. Yeah, we had a. Yeah, it was a pretty. Out. There was about like how many kids do you think were there? 90. Really? Yeah. There was, there, was, uh, there was a lot of kids there, like ninety kids or something, and uh, we played in Romeo, at the High Octane Lounge, um, and we like. Uh, we made like you know a decent profit out of it, so we got everyone like pizza and cake and stuff like that. So it was really cool and like just to say thank you to our fans and everything for a year. Yeah, we wanted to be like a hangout, like not just like a show. We wanted to like show people that we were like thank you for listening yeah. to us. You guys seem to have a pretty big following. Are you guys gonna branch out and head to the the West Coast and try to do this, you know, for real? Like it it'd be it'd be cool. I mean, that's kind of the plan. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd say for us, our our plan, as soon as possible, is to start trying to play more shows around the Michigan, Ohio area, and things like that. And then, eventually, if I mean, if we can branch out, that would be the ultimate goal if we can. Yeah, we're planning on like going into the studio and actually recording, like, because our first stuff was really like sketchy and it wasn't very good. <laughs> 
So we're going into the, a good studio this time and um, hoping we'll get, like, I guess, what would you say, like, attention from that or something. Like, people people, people that are important. Like, I, I, I see it as, like, it's a ladder of, like, meeting people and then, like, and, uh, like, practice is a huge thing, too. Like, being able to practice, like, twice a week and, like, being, like, okay, let's run the set, let's run the set, like, and actually being passionate about, like, wanting to get better at your craft and, like, getting the set down and... Because I know we all feel that way about it. We want to get it as good as we can, so... But, yeah. Well, it seemed that way. You guys... We had everyone back there talking about how it sounded like a professional, like, band. You guys obviously know what you're Thank doing. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you guys want to go down the line and just talk about what your favorite part about being in this band is because this band is so unique and it has a different message like you said than most bands in the area so why don't you start with jeff um <coughs> well like as a little kid like i remember myself like listening to like old like pop punk bands or something and like imagining myself on stage in front of millions of people screaming so it was sweet and like it's just cool to just see how god's like totally like I have, like, no musical talent at all, so uh, it's just sweet to see how he's blessed me with this, like, with all these guys, these, like, great musicians, great writer, great drummer, like, all these guys are just, they're phenomenal, and, like, they just totally, like, are a blessing in my life, and um, it's just been just great to see how God has been using us to help others, and um, just, like, I just love playing music. I love, like, being on stage and, like, going all out. It's, like, the best feeling ever. Well... I've been in many bands before this, and I guess the best part about being in this band is it's kind of refreshing to actually be in a band where you get stuff done and you're constantly doing stuff that's leaning towards success, playing shows, getting bigger crowds over and over, I mean, making money to do big recordings. I mean, I drive a long time from Sterling Heights to get to Oxford to practice with these guys, but I mean, it, it's it's worth it. Like, I guess seeing the outcome of every show, like when I used to be in other bands, I mean, going to a show and you'd play in front of just the other bands and a couple of their friends, I mean, it's it's fun to play shows and it's fun to play music, but I mean, it's not, I guess all I'm trying to say is it's nice to get some recognition for all the hard work and stuff. And it, we, like, I know all these guys work as hard as they can and I think they definitely deserve it. Yeah, I think um, what I love about being in this band really is like, um, I've I've been in like uh, two bands before this band and like it's uh, it's been a long time but like I feel like really connected to the music and I feel like these like Chris said like we're all like in this together for the first time in my life it's not just like me with a bunch of guys writing all the music and telling everyone what to do not that I'm like a control freak it's just like I had to assume that position before and now I feel like it's it's a like we're all working together like so hard for this and like on top of that like these guys have be really become like my best friends you know and like we're like brothers and like we we've got each other's back and like it's a pretty awesome feeling so yeah i'd say like hanging out and obviously like cuz we like we just had us like almost like a band sleepover last night cuz we knew we had to come here so like waking up at like seven and Chris hitting me with like a pillow and stealing my bed. <laughs> that's that's really fun. And him stealing my shower and <laughs> there's a lot of fun stuff that goes on. But yeah, just like <laughs> Yeah, just just like playing the music, I I feel really like I love I love booking shows, I love playing shows, I love like it's really cool because it took a long time to like set up the venue, set up the because I, I wanted to you know, have a good turnout for the show. So I wanted to try something different that local shows usually don't have. They only have, they have like eight or nine bands and like it'll just be the people playing. But like I wanted to have like three bands and have a good crowd and to see like me like try a different way and to see it like really, really work was really cool and exciting for me. Like, so that was cool for me. For me, I've been in multiple bands and with all of them, I've really strived to be able to share my heart on stage and to be able to put everything into music and really talk about what it is that we stand for and I this is the first band I've been in that I've really felt connected to the music that I can do that that every time that I'm moving on stage every scream that I'm putting out is it's so much more than just 
wanting to do it because it, it fits the music. And I can actually put my entire self into the music. And then what is really cool for me too, and then between songs, is that we're able to really slow down the music and I'm able to really share what I feel God is really doing in my life and what the band is for. So for me, it's an opportunity not only to play music, but also to reach out to people. And it's it's incredible to have people come up to you afterwards and just say how they had no idea who you were or your band or anything before that, but that being able to hear that I've gone through what they've gone through and we can connect on that level is just it's such an incredible experience for me. Like I, I, I go to every show praying that I'd be able to find someone like that that I can really truly connect with. Yeah, I think that's like a sweet part for me too. Like kids that I don't know, like coming up to us after like in tears because like they were really moved. Like and like their whole like week, like they said like their whole week was terrible and they just like got to like basically just like I feel like so much better now and like they came up and talked to us and like that that's really sweet too. Like know that you're actually like making a difference in people like people's lives. I think that's like one really humbling experience yeah. too. I was gonna say too, uh, just a quick side note is that what it, it really is so humbling to understand that it's not us doing this, that we go up on stage and we make a bunch of noise. Like it's it's not us impacting people. It's God using us to impact people and it's such an incredible opportunity that we have right now.
well, if anyone wanted to experience all the amazing things that go on during your show, do you guys have any upcoming events that you could, you know, share with us right now? This Friday, right? Yeah, this Friday, uh, a friend of our band um, is having their farewell show. We are royalty. Yeah, we are royalty. We'll give them a little shout out. They're ha having their farewell show. And so we're playing there with our other good friends, Righteous Downfall. And that is in Otisville. A-R-D. In Otisville, I want to say. Yeah, Otisville. Otisville. At the Hangar. So that that's our next show coming up that we're really excited about. And Outlive Fest. And then, yeah, Outlive Fest is another huge one. That one's put on by the guys from Righteous Downfall. That one is in April. Yeah. Isn't it in somewhere in Detroit or yeah. something? I don't know. It's in the Detroit Pub or something. Detroit yeah. Pub? I don't know. So this Friday, you guys will be in Otisville? Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on Backstage Access. It was great having you guys, and good luck on your upcoming events and thank in your you. future. Thank you. Okay, well, that's all the time we have today for Backstage Access. I'm Kayla Brandon, and we'll see you next time.